is Cadence Boucher. I'm going to be talking about using a data science tool called Network Analysis to analyze Virginia's mineral system. So a little bit about me and how I started this project. I'm a ninth grade homeschool student from Nelson County. Um, I'm interested in mineralogy and data science, if you haven't guessed it already. Um, in 2016, I watched a documentary called Life's Rocky Start. Um, it was about minerals role in evolution um, of the first plants and animals on Earth. So um, Dr. Hazen was the main mineralogist in this video. Um, so he is a scientist based at the Carnegie Institution in DC and at George Mason. Uh, George Mason. Uh, his recent research focuses on the roles of minerals and life's origins. Um, so after I watched this, I sent him a letter thanking him for creating the, the documentary and he replied in, um, in, uh, with, uh, with a letter and also sent me some mineral specimens. So that was really cool. And we kept in contact for about a year. And then in 2017, I asked if he had any ideas that related to current research in mer mineralogy. He sent me a research paper that he and his colleagues had recently published. Um, it was called Network Analysis of Mineralogical Systems. Um, it's really cool once you understand it. I didn't quite when I first read it. Um, but he suggested that I could do a network analysis of Virginia's um, mineral system. So I liked the idea, but I didn't really know anything about it. So I had to do a lot of background research, um, starting with some basic questions. Um, what is network? What, what is a network? Um, what is network analysis and how is this used in mineralogy? Um, so the first question is what is a network? Um, so a network is a large amount of data and how they relate. So a simple network might be everyone that goes to your grocery store. Um, a bigger network might be all those people plus all the other stores they shop at. An even bigger network would be everyone at, who shops at your store plus all the other stores they shop at and plus all the other people who shop at those stores. Um, the second question was, what is network analysis? Um, so network analysis is using mathematical methods to understand the networks. Um, so for example, Facebook uses network analysis, uh, network analysis um, to suggest friends for you. Um, governments use network analysis to identify potential terrorists, and it's also used to track and predict um, the spread of diseases like COVID-19. And the third was, how is this used in mineralogy? Um, so it's used to show patterns and relationships between minerals and their distribution. So one way to do this is with a force directed network. Um, so this is how I analyze Virginia's mineralogy. Um, so the picture here is of a simple force directed network um, showing the relations between the Les Miserables characters. So each dot on this network represents a character um, from that book and the connection between the two shows that those characters know each other. Um, so Characters in the uh, no, um, characters in the center of the network um, are probably the main characters since they know the most people. Um, so once I kind of understood all of those questions, um, I found a website um, with the code that I could use as a template to create my own networks. Um, and I gathered data from MinDAT um, and recorded uh, on all the recorded minerals and where they were found in Virginia. Um, so I spent several hours a day for several months collecting this data and adding it to the code. And what's on the right is what it looks like once I've inputted all the data. Um, so I'll explain how a network works now. Um, the dots of the network are called nodes, and they represent either a mineral or county in this case. A link between the two um, means that, the, that that mineral is found in that county. So the links act like springs. Um, the links like push and pull the mineral and county nodes together. And what ends up happening is if um, that when, when they push two nodes closer together, that shows that they have um, more minerals in common. So the closer two county nodes are together, the um, more mineral uh, species that they have um, in common. And so a network would be a group of related minerals and counties. Um, so here's the network is again, um, all of the orange counties represents, um, I'm sorry, all of the orange nodes represent counties in Virginia and all of the blue nodes represent minerals in, um, in Virginia. So every mineral species and county is represented by exactly one node on this network. So for example, um, this orange node here represents Amelia County, and all of these um, blue nodes represent the counties, um, represent the mineral species that are found there. So those, partic those one, um, ones that I've circled are just, um, found in Amelia or only recorded in Amelia. All the other ones, um, if you can see these small links here, are all over the network. 
So after I finished this first network, I sent an image of it back to Dr. Hazen. Um, he was impressed with it, and so he invited me to the Carnegie Institution in DC um, for a meeting with data scientists and mineralogists working on this. So this picture is at the front of Carnegie. So a little bit about Carnegie. It's a nonprofit research organization, organization in DC, um, founded in 1901 by Andrew Carnegie. In 2017, they were one of the first institutions, they were one of the institutions that observed two neutron stars colliding, um, creating gold, silver, and platinum. And it was also where scientists did some of the first experiments on nuclear fission and on the strong force. Um, so this building here is the Atomic Particle Observatory. Um, they, built it into a, um, they built it to look like an observatory so that the people um, that live nearby wouldn't complain about a particle accelerator. So now it's used as a storage shed, so people who live nearby shouldn't be worried anymore. Um, but during this meeting, I worked with a data scientist, Ahmed Alish. Um, he helped me with certain sections of the code to add sides and then coloring to the network, which displayed more data. And after this meeting, I created several more networks um, that show different relationships um, in Virginia's mineral system. Um, the picture on the right is of everyone at the meeting at Carnegie. It's not a great picture, um, but that was every, all the data scientists and mineralogists that were there. So on the right was what the first network was when it was just the data. Um, it didn't have any, it, was just, it didn't have any um, other, uh, other information except for where, they, where the minerals were found. And on the right is what uh, looked like after the meeting and after I added more coding. Um, so it's very big improvement. So size represents how many counties the mineral is found in or how many minerals is found in that county. So the larger the county node, the more mineral species have been recorded there. Um, a color represents a certain attribute of the mineral. So it's very difficult to gather data on mineral abundance, um, which I'm sure you all know. Um, but the size of the node doesn't represent. So the size of the node doesn't represent the abundant re represent the abundance of the mineral. It re just represents how many counties it's recorded in. So quartz is the largest mineral node on the network. Um, so that means it's recorded in the most counties. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most abundant in every county. Um, Amelia is the largest county node, so that just means there are more recorded minerals there. And it helps that Amelia mine um, it, um, was there gave a lot of a lot of the data from Amelia mine is on that on, is what um, most of the um, data on Virginia is on the net. So this is a section of the code that will that runs the data. Um, what the red arrow is pointing to determines the color of the nodes, um, and what the blue arrow is pointing to um, is the the uh, programming for the um, the key in the corner, which will tell you what you're looking at. Um, this is a section of the data. Um, as you can see, these numbers are really big, and so there's a lot more of it. Um, I don't know, really know how many lines of code, but quite a bit. Uh, the ID is the county or the mineral name. The group number um, determines what color it is. So if we go back to the, um, the main program, uh, it's group two. So whatever color this is, is what that node will show up as. And the count number is just how many minerals is found in the county. So this is Patrick County, so that means there are and there are 27 recorded minerals there, so that it'll size it accordingly. Um, so this is a network of uh, Virginia's minerals and counties. I've colored the mineral nodes light blue, so all of the light blue nodes on here are the minerals. Um, and I colored the counties based off of geophysical province, a uh, geomorphic provinces, sorry. Um, so this is the Appalachian Plateau counties. There are only three of them. The Valley and Ridge are all here, and then the Blue Ridge. Um, Piedmont is the largest, and then the coastal plain is on the east. Um, so a main cluster on this network is of the Valley uh, and Ridge counties here. They were pulled together because that shows that they have a lot of um, minerals in common, mineral species in common. So that's why the network pulled them together. Um, same with the Blue Ridge, um, Blue Ridge counties. They were pulled together. Um, the Piedmont, uh, the two Appalachian Plateau counties are over here, and then the coastal plain um, counties are pretty widely distributed throughout the network um, with a slight trend here. Um, so it makes sense that they're all kind of clustered with their own counties since that's how they are on the map. Um, so, so, so this is Amelia County, that's what this node represents. It's um, a county in the Piedmont region. Um, uh, that is pointing to the brown node, um, Wise County. And so the fact that they're on opposite ends of the network um, tells you that they don't really have anything in common. 
So they probably have maybe maybe one or two minerals, um, mineral species that are both found there, which is what this nice star tells me. <laughs> uh, because the two counties are farther apart, they don't have very many similar minerals. Oh, so this is potassium nitrate, and this is kyanite, and so the same with them. They're on opposite ends of the network, so they probably aren't, so that shows that they aren't really found in the same county, so that's why they were pulled away from each other. Um, whereas beryl is right next to kyanite, so they're pulled together because that shows that they do, they are found in the similar counties. Um, so if anyone has any questions about the network, this would be a good time if you need that to be answered, then that's the next network. So if there are any questions, I can answer those now. Oops, I keep doing that. You can message in the chat too if you, uh, or you can unmute yourself. She yeah. just want to make sure everyone's following along. <laughs> yeah, because it's a lot of information I've kind of just thrown at you at once, but if there isn't, I can move on to the next one. I don't know if I can see the chat. I don't see it here. Oh no, I think I do. You're good. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, this is uh, this is a, it's the same network except all of the mineral nodes are colored to show whether or not they have carbon in them. So all of the green nodes um, are minerals that have no carbon, and then all the blue are minerals that do have carbon. So there's the um, Valley and Ridge County cluster again, and that's to show how it relates to this cluster, which is of carbon-bearing minerals, which are the blue nodes. Um, so the, f the fact that they have pulled closer together shows that there are, um, they, ha they, are they have a similar relationship. Um, so after analyzing these networks visually, I calculated them into percentages. Um, these percentages on this table um, are out of all the mineral species in Virginia. So for example, about 22% of all the mineral species in Virginia are non-carbon bearing and are found in the Valley and Ridge region. Um, this shows that the Piedmont region has the highest percent of non-carbon bearing minerals and carbon bearing minerals, um, but that's just because more mineral species are recorded in the Piedmont region. It's just a larger um, region in general, and, uh, and the Amelia mine has contributed a lot of data. Um, but when we look at the, each region individually, we see that there's a much higher percent of, the, of mineral species recorded in the Valley Ridge region that are carbon bearing, um, which was more what the um, network was showing. Um, so yes, the Piedmont region does have more um, carbon, bearing, carbon bearing mineral species, but the Valley Ridge just has a higher concentration, um, which is why the networks pulled them together. Um, the next network, um, the mineral nodes are colored to represent their hardness. Um, so red is softer, green is uh, in the middle, and then blue is the hard, harder. So there is a harder mineral cluster here. Um, it does look like they're a little bit spread out through the network, but there's mainly a, a sl small pattern here of harder minerals. Um, and quartz is the main exception here, but it is found in almost any, every county, so it's kind of more in the center of the network. Um, so the general trend here is it's going from um, harder minerals, um, harder mineral nodes, kind of more towards there are softer ones down here. So that was the general trend in this network. Um, so in this table, um, the horizontal rows adds up adds up to 100%. So um, that means about 29% of the soft minerals, um, the soft mineral species, are in the Valley and Ridge region, and 18% um, of the hard minerals are in the are in the Valley and Ridge. So um, uh, once again, the Piedmont region has the highest percent in every category, um, but simply because they have more recorded minerals. Um, but when we look at the concentration again, um, we see that the Valley Ridge has a higher percent of softer minerals and um, a lower concentration of harder. So that was kind of that was what the networks were more showing um, as for that general trend. Um, and then these, um, the Appalachian Plateau and the Blue Ridge percentages are a little bit more exaggerated just because there are fewer counties um, in, in those regions. So comparing them to the Valley Ridge and Piedmont um, aren't, wouldn't give you great, um, wouldn't, wouldn't just, it wouldn't be accurate, I guess. Um, so this, the minerals here are colored to, to show what classification they are. Um, I use the Dana system just because MINDAT didn't have all um, information using nickel strands for everything, so I just use the Dana system. 
Um, so the main pattern here we see is of silicate minerals, which are the light blue. They are kind of clustered near that, the Piedmont um, counties that, were, that are clustered in the top of the network. And this is just shows how it relates to the valley and ridge. So the fact that they're on two different sides of the networks um, can, will tell you that they probably don't have very, as many counties in common. Um, hemimorphite is one of the, is, is the, probably the only exception it looks like. And it is in that valley and ridge cluster. And so since I saw it's on the network, I decided to just look at it on a map. And so all the blue um, colored counties are where hemimorphite is found. And then all the yellow could be possible occurrences if you're kind of looking at the general trend. Um, so if you went to go those counties and you looked hard enough, you would probably find hemimorphite. Um, but this is just a small idea of what network analysis can show you. Um, so that was interesting. Another pattern is of sulfides. Um, they're the green nodes and they're clustered kind of in the Valley and Ridge um, cluster there also. Um, so that was a cool pattern to see. And one of my personal favorite clusters, which might sound weird, but um, is of gold, silver, and copper. It's the three pink nodes here. They cluster together, um, which makes sense since they are found together. Um, uh, they are found together. And um, I would not have noticed that pattern unless, unless I, um, if I hadn't colored it like this. So that was a cool pattern to see. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So I'll just um, show you a few, like the bigger patterns. Um, the, um, the coastal plain has a higher concentration of silicate mineral species, um, which I didn't see on the network since the coastal plain nodes are pretty spread out to the network. Um, but about 40% of the uh, coastal plain mineral species are silicates. Um, so that was, that was a cool pattern. Oh, that was an interesting thing to see on the percentages that I didn't see on the network. Um, um, but 60% of the total silicate mineral species are in the Piedmont, which was kind of what, that, that what was um, shown on the network. And then with the carbon percentages, um, the Valley Ridge uh, has the 18%. And um, so that was kind of more what was, what, that was kind of the same as what the carbon um, network showed. So that was um, cool too. Um, so some next steps with this project, I'm working on a research paper with Ahmed, um, who was the data scientist that, um, that worked with me at Carnegie, and then Dr. Shauna Morrison. Uh, we presented together at the Smithsonian um, uh, for the uh, DC Mineral Club last uh, November, I believe. And oh, well, so she works at the Carnegie Institute, and Dr. Morrison operates, um, the app operated the mass spectrometer on the Curiosity rover on Mars. Um, and so at Carnegie, they're using network analysis to study the mineralogy on Mars. So you can see some of their networks um, on the Carnegie website, which is the deeptimedatainfrastructure.carnegiescience.edu. They are really cool. Um, so another next step would be cluster analysis. Um, so it's another way to analyze the networks. So instead of visually looking for patterns, um, a computer code identifies closely related groups of minerals and counties. Um, so this is a cluster that it pulled out of that, um, where azurite and malachite are the center here, and then these are counties that they are found together. These aren't all the counties, but this is just what the um, cluster is. And then these two um, minerals here, um, you, could, you could look further into that. Um, it's more for further study if, you, if you're interested. Um, I'm also hoping to contribute some research to Thomas's Hale's um, uh, forthcoming book on the mineralogy of Virginia, and also support the Virginia Mineral Project. Uh, I will show you my website just so you can see what the uh, network looks like. So this is what the network looks like when it loads. Um, and it's, this is how you know what each node is. So if you hover over Amelia, if, this, if it decides to work, um, uh, it'll tell you that's Amelia County. And um, so this is on my website, uh, Virginia Minerals. Dot com and there's multiple there are I have other um, networks also one showing you the crystal structure so this will work now but yeah so that tells you that that mineral node is kyanite and you can kind of pull it around and if you um, just to just uh, Kate, we can't see that on the screen are you able to pull it up or would you like me to see if I can pull it up oh you can't see the Virginia minerals no you're gonna oh, maybe okay. take down the PowerPoint and then see if you can. Okay, um, take that down. Okay, I'll have to be screen share. Um, there I we was go. saying I was jealous of your virginiaminerals.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Um, okay, so can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Awesome. Okay. So if you hover over, um, I'll show you when it loads again because it's kind of cool if it wants to. I don't know if my internet will allow it. Um, okay, so that's what it looks like when it loads. All the other nodes that you saw, just like if you saw it, like just go out into nothing. Um, those are nodes that just didn't have any connections, um, just counties that didn't have anything listed. Um, so when you hover over a node, you can tell that if it wants to work, but that's Amelia County. And if you go over here, that is Kyanite. A little box appears that'll tell you, but um, it's not loading right now. Um, so, oh, there, there it goes. That county is Campbell County. Camp Bell, Campbell County. I cannot pronounce it. Um, this is quartz, so you can so you can go around. You can figure out what each thing is, um, which is how I know that that's Amelia and that's Kyanite. Um, and then, uh, real quick, I'll show you how I just how I used uh, Mindat to get all this data. I basically just went to Mindat, looked at Virginia. Uh, Amelia mine actually came up first, which was which was kind of funny. Just um, so these are all the minerals that are in Virginia, and so I had to, I copied all of these. I didn't do any of the varieties um, just because they're included, I guess. Um, these are all the minerals, and then uh, here are all the counties. So then I went to each individual county, which here's Albemarle, and um, I went down to their list of minerals, and then so how I programmed the links was for Albemarle. I do Albemarle is linked to um, like actinolite and then did that for um, every mineral. And so I did that for every county, which is why it took forever. And then I can't, don't know if it'll let me just because this, um, I'll just go to, if I can do it here. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, and then I go to each mineral page and when I wanted to get specific data, like it's crystal system, which I did for, I did another network on that. Um, this, I would, I use that information and also for its classification. So Dana classification 14, so it's a carbonate. Um, so that is how I got all of the data for my networks. And um, here, I'll pull up my presentation um, once again. Okay. Um, Oh, I don't, okay. I need to, I think, stop the share real quick so I can go to the presentation again. Okay, there we go. Um, so, okay. Sorry about that. And see if this will. Uh, and so, in conclusion, um, force directed networks provide a visual representation to guide further study. Um, so some of the patterns for the softer minerals kind of clustered near those Valley and Ridge County nodes, um, the gold, silver, and copper co-occurrence, and silicates cluster near the Piedmont, and then the copper marine minerals cluster near the Valley and Ridge. So there's my website again, and then my email. Um, and uh, thanks for listening and Zooming. Uh, if anyone, does anyone have any questions? Uh, I, I can keep this on, I can keep uh, sharing this if I need to go back to anything. Um, oh. 